Hi, I'm Mike Sintolo, Chief Analyst of Cabot Growth Investor and Cabot Top 10 Trader. I'm here with your Cabot Weekly Review. So I'm not here to trumpet sunshine, but I do think I'm sort of splitting my view a little bit into the near term, which can mean the next, I don't know, two to four weeks. I mean, something like that versus kind of everything else. In the near term, I mean, I'm more optimistic maybe that last week can represent a what I call a workable low. And that doesn't mean you know, a generational low that's 2008 all over again. It just means something that the market can bounce from. Some stocks can begin to repair the damage. The indexes can do the same. Hopefully some stocks obviously react well to earnings and start to show a little bit of uh, spunk and, and go from there. And then we'll, we'll take it from there. Um, we saw a lot of extremes last week. I think I mentioned them, you know, 30, whatever, 4% of the NASDAQ hit new lows last Monday and 86% were below their 200 day line. It can definitely get more oversold. I'm not an oversold guy that buys on that. Um, but, you know, they tend, th those are readings that were similar seen at other major NASDAQ bottoms. NYSE wasn't quite as extreme. Then we got a lot of choppiness last week. That's usually a sign that the bulls and bears are finally fighting it out. The bulls are putting up a fight and then obviously we've had a bounce. Now, the stuff that's happened this week with uh, Facebook or Meta or whatever getting hit and Amazon's up and snaps up, snaps down 20% yesterday and this morning it's up 40 or whatever. Um, that isn't, I mean, it's crazy, but, but it's not so super abnormal in my opinion in terms of a bottoming process. In other words, you get a lot of volatility, you get some headline bad news, and it's almost like people become more negative and more worried even though the market itself isn't lower than it was you know, a few days ago, it's higher. Now, that's the near-term view. I'm optimistic we've hit a low that we can work on. Beyond that, it's still pretty dry times. I mean, the intermediate-term trend is negative, whether you're looking at the major indexes or growth-oriented indexes. The longer-term trend turned negative. Our trend model turned negative at the end of last week. That's not a pinpoint indicator, but just a background thing. Defensive stocks are still in favor, and you still have a lot of these. I'm not a big early-stage, late-stage like sector guy, but I mean, you know, you got commodities and oil stocks working. Those tend to be late-stage sort of things. So We'll see how it goes. I haven't really changed uh, my stance. We're still almost 70% cash in Capric Growth Investors model portfolio. I could do a little rejiggering. I wouldn't mind, you know, I could nibble on something here or there. Um, but again, it's more like, I think maybe the worst is passed for the immediate future. But unless you're really sort of a trader or conversely a very long-term person that wants to kind of build positions, uh, which I'm not, I'm more of a position trader. Um, you know, it's it's still, I think you're just kind of in no man's land here. I wouldn't be, you know, selling wholesale, but I think it pays just to be defensive, be patient, let everyone else fight it out on a daily basis, pay attention to what's happened. It's fun to see these things move all over the place, but just realize that, you know, at this point, it's kind of like picking up nickels in front of a bulldozer. Maybe you buy the stock and it gaps up on earnings. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe oil prices go up. Maybe they don't sort of thing. So right now I still think it's time to be mostly on the sideline and then we'll just take it as it comes from here. Okay, let's hop into the charts. As usual, I'm using a program called MarketSmith. You can learn more at marketsmith.com. It's a product of Investors Business Daily. Get my pen out here. So here's the NASDAQ. Now in the very, again, this is very short term and I don't want to just talk about all short term because that's not really my focus, but I do say that, you know, the NASDAQ went from, say, 13,100 to 14,500, call it. And then yesterday, this is, I'm recording this Friday morning, February 4th, late Friday morning. So on Thursday, this is when we had the Facebook meta, whatever it's called, you know, big uh, implosion. It was a big move. I wouldn't say it really did anything. We're just kind of in this range, so to speak, and we're still way off the lows. Um, but it's one of these, you know, big bad days that gets everyone kind of worried again even though it really doesn't change the whole outlook. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, so on a short-term basis, I still think we could work off this low bounce. Let's see how things go, see if we get some more positive earnings gaps. The higher we go, you generally speaking, doesn't always work this way. It didn't work this way in uh, 2015. Um, but the higher we go uh, on the rebound, usually the better off we are in terms of if we do come back down and retest in the weeks ahead, it has a higher degree of um, success. But we'll, we'll just have to see how it goes here. Right now, uh, short term, I think, like I said, there's some support. But intermediate term, we're not even back to the 25 day line, the 50 days way up here. Our intermediate term trend model basically needs these indexes to hit a five week high. And if you count back, depending on what you're looking at, somewhere in this range. So now some of these days will start falling off, but there's there's a lot of work to go here and that that's the nasdaq now other indexes you know the s p 500 still remains and the new york composite remain in better shape you know above the 200 day line um it did get rejected here near uh the 25 day line earlier this week but you know we'll see if we can thrust higher next week but intermediate 
term. Longer term, you can say it's it's still hanging on, but intermediate term, it, it's tough. And, and we're starting to get all this overhead to chew through. doesn't mean we can't, but we'll see how it goes. All right. The New York Composite also, um, you know, relatively, I don't want to say strong, but just relatively hanging in there, I guess. You know, it's really not. It's still kind of in this middle of this range here. Um, but, you know, you just kind of flip through it. Um, let's just look at the IWM, you know, buried uh, mid caps, a little bit better than the small caps, but still way below all moving averages. So that's why I'm still defensive. I'm not trying to sit here and say, oh, we've hit a low. We're going to go straight up. But I mean, I think there's a chance here that if you have some broken stocks, you could probably sell them on further rally sort of thing. Uh, if you're already defensive and you want to, you know, like I said, try to pick up some of those nickels, you know, you can do a little nibbling here or there. There is some things working. There's some stuff that has reacted well to earnings. But for the most part, the main sort of message is, you know, just stay cautious, stay defensive. This will end. Maybe it already has, but this will end at some point. And when it does, there'll be a lot of money to be made. You just got to get there. OK, um, growth oriented indexes are which almost makes it easier for me. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'd rather have these indexes up here, but there's really nothing doing. This is QQQJ, which I watch. And I sort of talked about this in the last issue where our, I'm almost monitoring these closer than the general indexes because growth stocks and the rest of the market have been so kind of dancing to their own drummer. So this is one, you know, QQQJ, still kind of buried. Um, IWO, which is small cap growth, um, same sort of thing. You can just see it hasn't really rallied much, you know, in the scheme of things, even from the beginning of the year. <clears throat> so far, it just looks like a normal pullback within a downtrend. Um, IPO, the IPO fund from Renaissance, same sort of thing. So I'd like to see these things get, even if, you know, they're going to have to come down and retest or whatever, you just like to see them kind of get ahead of steam. And like I said, the further they can get on the upside, maybe the better chance they have to hold if when there is some reverberations down the road, which is kind of more likely than not. OK, I did want to mention just because I did get questions on, um, you know, first of all, you know, whatever. This is Facebook and, or Meta. I keep saying Facebook and uh, this, it's not really a true growth stock anymore in the sense of, you know, it's big. It's huge. Obviously, it's well known. That's not really where my methodology is focused on. But I would just say, you know, hope, I hope that this is some sort of panic low and Facebook rallies from here. They'll probably be good for the market. But just be careful with these things. You know, I get questions whenever you get these big, well-known names that plunge 20 percent on earnings. Um, all I can say is, on average, just playing the odds, there's usually reverberations from that, kind of like the market. When you kind of have a mini crash like this, it's very rare unless it's really, really extreme, like March 2020 when everyone's freaking out. Um, or 9-11 was another one where there was no retest or anything like that. It just kind of rallied from there for a while. Um, usually when you get these sort of, you know, sort of these tops here, it's not like the stock's been out of favor for five years and then it plunges. Usually there's going to be further reverberations. I'm not making any predictions with, with Facebook or whatever, but, you know, I would just be careful with some of those. The other thing, too, is um, today anyway, we'll see how we close. So like here's Snap, which I was amazed to see fell from its peak, um, I think it was in September actually up here, uh, to its low yesterday, it was down 70% from its high in four months or whatever it was, five months. So, I mean, obviously very extreme. Now you're getting this sort of, and we've seen a little bit of this in a few stocks. We've some of this really big upside volume. This is a weekly chart, you know, obviously a huge move. So, you know, again, it's still clearly in a downtrend. Now, what I could say is if we close strong today and all that, hey, that could be a low, you know, it doesn't mean we can't back off here, but, you know, there's finally some people stepping up in here willing to say this is too low, at least for now, you know. So we'll see how it goes. If we see more and more of this sort of action among some of those really beaten down growth stocks, not that I'm going to be buying those. I don't think they're set up to be leaders or anything, but I think for the market as a whole, it would be a, a semi-decent sign. But in terms of buying them here, again, you're just playing. I'm not saying it can't go up, uh, but I'm just saying it's still in a downtrend. It's not really set up. And the only reason you're buying is because it's kind of making some dramatic move, one day move on earnings, which can be good if the stock is set up, but obviously the market and the stock are not. OK, what I'd rather focus on is just what's working now. It's still early. I think I mentioned this a couple weeks ago. You know, what we want is the bounce and then you can start getting the wheat separated from the chaff. So here's an it. So here's a couple names. Some of them are slow. Some of them are commodity. Some of them are growth. Let's see. So this is Corning uh, Corning. Not going to you know, you're not going to brag about a cocktail party. Uh, but here's a weekly chart. You get kind of almost like a three waves down. And then again, you're kind of seeing some of this. This is the biggest weekly volume in whatever, really, since the pandemic crash. 
Um, it's not a huge grower, you know, 14% a year, but it's one of these, you know, pays a dividend, steady growth, earnings are out of the way, beat estimates, business should be good, you know, not going to be crushed from the Fed or anything like that. No supply chain issues or, you know, not many. Um, and so my guess is, you know, if you did want to play something, you know, pullbacks into support with some sort of stop would be a pretty good risk reward. But, you know, we're just kind of flagging some of these uh, names that have reacted well or, or, or bounced back. Another one, this has been in top 10. This is Nexstar Media. Again, you have, you know, decent yield. The earnings on this are a little weird because of um, depreciation. Anyway, it's, it's more of a cash flow story, uh, although earnings look pretty good, too. Um, they're going to benefit from the political advertising stuff going on. But you can just see it's really flirting with new highs here. They do still have earnings here on the 22nd coming out, February 22nd. But you can see, you know, it, it hit a new high here in January, got yanked down by the market. As soon as the pressure came off the market, snaps right back to new highs. Again, is this going to be your dynamic leader for the next four years? I don't think so. Um, but it is acting well here, and it probably could do pretty well if the pressure comes off the market. Um, this one kind of surprised me. Um, I probably won't go there, but this is MasterCard. Um, and we know PayPal, well, I don't know if you know, PayPal imploded this week. Square looks terrible. Um, but what's interesting with MasterCard, and again, it's kind of too big and slow for me, so to speak, but it has been sitting around for quite a while. It really never, it wasn't hot after the pandemic. You can see this, you know, really hasn't gone anywhere net-net since the pre-pandemic peak. Um, but the stock does have good earnings estimates here. You can see 24% a year this year next. This is all from Market Smith again. Not your cheapest stock, 46 times earnings, but just an interesting little volume cluster here. Six days in a row, above average volume, right on. I think it started the day before earnings and then right on after earnings and it raced. It actually ticked sort of a new high and then, you know, obviously getting rejected. So, you know, you don't want to chase things in this environment, but if it can kind of hold up here, Again, you're starting to look at some stocks that look like, hey, okay, this was, first of all, it hit a much higher low than in December, which is relatively rare out there. And second of all, it, you know, obviously is much higher than that here. So that's kind of an interesting chart I noticed. The other thing that kind of came up, or one of the other things, is some of these bull market stocks. So this is Blackstone. Now, I'm a little, it's on my watch list, but it, it has had a big run, which isn't my favorite scenario. And it hasn't really had that much time to correct and all that. So I'd prefer something that maybe has spent a few months shaking and baking. Um, but you can't ignore, you know, it's really had a lot of selling here. But again, you get this sort of big, huge weekly volume clue. Uh, kind of looks like Snap, but in a, from a much better position. It didn't happen down here on the chart. <laughs> it happened up here. And you can see the stock has just really raced kind of a classic tennis ball action. And now it's backing off a little bit. But you can see, you know, it's, it gets hit and it's down four points, five points. You know, you look at your screen. Oh, it's down a few percent. You look at the chart. It looks pretty normal so, so so far. So Blackstone's interesting. And then just this morning, we'll see how it closes, is LPL Financial. Okay, it's tailing a little bit here. Well, no, not really. But you can see, um, again, it's financial, but this is really more of a bull market name. It's an independent advisor. Um, and, you know, I mean, it hit new highs today. So, I mean, that was after, I think it was earnings last night. Okay, and they got good earnings estimates. I don't know if those will be updated going forward. A lot of these financials had a huge, move, huge up move last year in earnings and then down this year. And I know the Fed's raising rates and that can help, but this is one where it actually has kind of the opposite. So um, LPL financial, a little thinner, a little bit more squiggly, but obviously showing relative strength. In terms of growth, I have to say we got we got um, we got handed our, you know, you know what with this thing. But um, Datadog is really one of the stronger names out there, resilient names. It's kind of held basically held its 200 day line, which is rare. You can see down here it's shown a little bit of volume accumulation, not a ton. It's not in position to buy. But just relative strength wise, believe it or not, 27% off its high is somewhat heroic. Um, it needs work to do, but it's in one of these positions where let's say it came out, it doesn't have, it does have earnings next week. Let's say it came out in earnings and gapped up here or something. Doesn't mean it's ready to go necessarily, um, but it would just be like, okay, it's starting to, like I said, the wheat separating from the chaff. So Datadog's one I'm keeping an eye on. Um, ServiceNow, I mean, it's a popular stock. So again, this is kind of um, almost like the software version of MasterCard. I'm not sure I'm gonna go there. Um, but you can just see it corrected, and again, you're getting this. I mean, look at the weekly volume here was the highest, again, since sort of the post-pandemic period, I think, even before that. So, I mean, it's noteworthy that, you know, hey, maybe the stock has hit a low. There's some buyers down there saying business is good, you know, enough is enough. So, obviously, if the market falls another 15%, all bets are off. But so far, it clearly looks like um, it certainly hit a workable low there. Um, this one's thinner. Uh, it's not so much thin. 
dollar wise, but only trades 260,000 shares a day. But this is Inspire Medical, INSP. I followed this for a little bit last year. Um, you can see it had a good run, but really just kind of started chopping around here for over a year. But at this point, I say that's a good thing. Again, a little bit of a volume clue two weeks ago, nothing huge. Earnings next week on the 8th, um, but only 22% off its high. And again, you're kind of look trying to find stocks where you know, like if you got a snap down here and it gaps up 30%, which it did, it's still buried. But with this thing, if it gaps up, not 30%, but if it gaps up, you know, 10 or 15%, all of a sudden you're like, hey, whoa, this thing looks like, you know, kind of wants to get going if the market behaves itself. So you're kind of looking at some of these things. Um, and I do like the fact that it's had a big sort of long consolidation here. Wouldn't mind if it got a little bit more liquid or discovered. Um, Schwab, I probably sh I should have mentioned Schwab with the financial. Sorry about that. But Schwab to me still looks pretty good. It, it tried to pull back in here and you can just see there's been all these days of sort of t I call these tails uh, on the week on the daily chart. So just support, 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 support as it hit the 50 day line. Now, could it come in tomorrow and just tank? Of course, Monday, I guess, and tank. Sure. But so far, that's looking pretty good. Earnings are out of the way. Good estimates. Um, dividend, yada, yada, yada. Looks pretty good. Um, Palo Alto Networks, I wanted to mention, PANW. I mean, my only issue with this is that um, the other cybersecurity stocks, you know, some, like Zscaler, we'll look at Zscaler, why not? Zscaler is like okay okay in the relative scheme of things, like, oh, wow, it's hanging around the 200-day line. It's not completely buried, you know, and it's got earnings in less than a month. So, you know, but most of this group, including even Zscaler, you know, just really doesn't look very good. So that's kind of a, a little bit of a lone ranger. Um, but I have to say Palo Alto Networks does continue to look good. And the, long, the, the, the all I can say is the longer it hangs in there, the better. It does have earnings on the 22nd. Um, but the longer it can kind of hang in here, bob and weave, maybe rally and pull back, see what happens on earnings, the better the chance that this sort of kickoff here back in August can lead to higher prices. And then you kind of got the commodity complex. First of all, I mentioned, yeah, oil services, I still, I mean, here it is, Halliburton now. Uh, kind of popping out today oil prices are above 90 i do get the sense that it's a little obvious at this point so i do think these are more pullbacks which i would favor anyway in this market but i i also think that halliburton just it just has that look to it um again it's halliburton it's huge but these things can move and i mean obviously they moved on the downside for many years so if it really gets going you can just see sort of the accelerating buying volume i do think pullbacks or some tightness haha <laughs> But if, if we actually got some tightness, that could be viable. Um, some of the producers, same thing, like Devon, DVN, I like. It looks good. Oh, you can see it's tailing a little bit here now this morning, but I mean, short term. But I do think, you know, maybe you get some pullbacks here, even, no matter what oil does. You know, maybe oil oil itself is probably due for a pullback of five or ten bucks just because it's been pretty hot in here. Um, and that could probably brag, uh, drag down the group. I still look at something like this back here when it popped down to the 50 day line with a the market, then you get three straight days of big volume buying, especially the first two. Um, you know, that should offer support on pullbacks, we'll see. Um, but I think the trend is looks good, it's just a little bit extended. Marathon Oil is another example, MRO. Um, you can see just kind of sticking straight up in the air, so maybe wait for some pullbacks on that. Um, the other thing I would say though, in the energy space, last but not least, so this is what I am seeing is natural gas is its own animal a little bit. And you're starting to see some of the natural gas plays pick up. Now, this is sort of a complicated one. This used to be Simrex Energy. They bought Cabot Oil and Gas, no relation to us, uh, out in the Marcellus. Um, and you can just see it's kind of had this big long, it never really, you know, it wasn't like it was up 500% last year, just this huge long consolidation. Uh, this is basically what Cabot Oil and Gas was doing. And they've been merged here for a little while. And you can just see it's just been grinding lower, tried to get going, market pulled it down. But you're starting to see the buying come in and you're starting to see some of the natural gas stocks um, approach their old highs again hitting some selling today but that's after a huge move so i'm not i'd rather look at the leaders and buy those on pullbacks in something in a certain sector in this case oils or energy i should say um, but sometimes within the sector there are different themes and if natural gas is going to be 450 instead of 350 or whatever uh, five bucks you know then some of these things could be that sort of set, subsector of the space could break out anyway energy looks good but in general, I would say it's, you know, it's had a pretty good move here in the last couple of weeks, few days. It's a little obvious. Prices are very high. You know, you just wonder if there's going to be some shaking the tree action or a rotation out of those and just into some tech stocks or something like that. Um, back to the NASDAQ, you know, we'll see how it goes. Like I said, I'm I'm hopeful that we can we've sort of hit this crescendo low. I mean, we pulled back whatever it was, 3,000, 3,100 points here on the NASDAQ, which is, I don't know, almost 20%, 15%, whatever it was, uh, to the low. 
um, pretty quickly, especially since the start of the year. So I'm optimistic we've hit a workable low. The question is, how do we work off that low? Do we really surge higher? Do we get a lot of earnings gaps? Do we have some fresh potential leadership show up in a variety of sectors? Or have we already hit sort of a near-term peak and we, we just kind of futz around here lower and lower and lower? That, that wouldn't be as good of a sign. So it's really just a feedback mechanism at this point. Uh, if you're assuming you're mostly on the sideline, you don't want to be complacent, but you don't want to be too bullish, too excited or too negative when things happen. Just kind of take it for what it's worth and try not to read the headlines, but pay attention to the charts and some of the, the, the real evidence there. And the market will tell you when it's ready to get going. Right now, short term probably has some further upside, in my opinion, but intermediate to longer term still has some issues to work with. OK, all right. That's all the time I have for today. Thanks for listening. And as always, come by again next week for another Cabot Weekly Review.